Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can improve your YouTube channel using a free plugin called vidIQ. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you the vidIQ Chrome extension. I'm going to explain why I think it's a valuable tool when you're trying to grow your YouTube channel. Now, this is the vidIQ website, and from here at vidIQ.com forward slash apps forward slash vision, you can actually go and grab the Chrome extension. You will need to be using the Chrome browser on either the Mac or the PC to be able to use this extension, but it's a very good reason for using Chrome. Now, one of the things about the extension is that it's free. So let's just go to pricing and see. So the basic is the one that you're going to get for free, and it's for creators with under a thousand subscribers. So basically, if you're setting out on YouTube, this is a good tool for you. It lets you have one user with one channel, uh, gives you a video scorecard, and some basic analytics. Now, if you want to crunch things up a little bit more, and you've got more than a thousand subscribers, then you may be wanting to look at Pro, and this is the one that I'm using. I've actually upgraded to Pro. I'm getting a lot more details out of vidIQ, but I'm still limited to one user, one channel. Now for Enterprise, once you get really big, then it's not only getting a lot more feature rich, the tool, but it's also getting a lot more expensive. I think the Pro is probably a good way to go, or basic if you're just starting out. So the first thing to do is to go and install the Chrome extension. And when you do, things in YouTube start looking a little bit different. So let's now go to one of my videos. I'm going to show you the vidIQ tool at work on this particular YouTube video. Now this is one I only uploaded very, very recently, but I've been doing a lot of work on my YouTube channel, and so I wanted to show you in relation to this particular video what I'm seeing at vidIQ. So I'm seeing the vidIQ panel here. It just opens up automatically. Once you've installed it into Chrome, it opens up automatically regardless of whose video you're viewing. So in a minute, I'm going to show you how you can use this tool to get information from other people's channels as well as your own. So I've got a playlist running here. So when you've got a playlist, everything's going to get pushed down because the playlist's at the top. If you're not viewing in a playlist, then vidIQ is going to appear at the top of the panel here. As I said, this one's only been released a few days, but it does have 159 views. It does have eight likes and no dislikes. So it's being applied a vidIQ score of 31 out of 100. Now, 31 out of 100 for me on this particular channel is not bad. It's certainly nowhere near my best, but it's also nowhere near my worst. My worst are the ones that I haven't been working on yet. Now. The blog at vidIQ actually tells you what they use to determine the vidIQ score. So let's briefly look at that. Here it is, the vidIQ score, how they rank YouTube videos. And they have this sort of magical source recipe here, but essentially it is a combination of things such as the average watch time. In other words, how long people watch your video for. It might be 10 minutes, how much of that gets watched, how many views you've got the metadata that you're using, the title for your video, the tags and the description, the popularity of the creator, so the number of subscribers you have is going to affect your vidIQ score, how viral a video is, Facebook likes, comments, shares, tweets, Reddit, StumbleUpon and Google+, the age of the video, so how recent is it or how old is it, and the engagement with YouTube likes, comments and subscriptions driven. So the people at vidIQ are not actually telling you what multiplier there is or what ranking is given to these things, but these are the things that basically they're looking at to give you your vidIQ score. So what you're aiming for is to get a higher score. So whatever you do, you want to start improving that score for your videos. Now I've 300 odd videos. And so one of the things that I'm tracking is what the vidIQ score is and how we're able to improve that over time. We have the current number of views and we have the channel subscribers. So that's going to tell me quickly how many subscribers I have to my channel, how many Facebook likes I have for this particular video, how many Facebook shares I have, how many YouTube likes, and it's ranking it as percentage of views. So this one has a fairly high number of Facebook likes for the number of views. 5% is a pretty good engagement level for my particular channel. 
there are YouTube comments. There are 13. Again, 8.2% of my views. Quite a lot of engagement on this particular video. Four tweets, 10 Google Pluses. There are 24 description link counts. So what that is, is I'm just going to open up my description here. And you can see that there's quite a detailed description for this video, including linked videos. So videos that are also on my channel that are included in here. So what vidIQ is doing is totaling up the links that I have in my description and giving me a count of that. Again, that's something that's important for improving your channel is increasing the links that you have in your description. A 300 word description count. So that's showing me how many words I have in my description and how many words per minute I speak at. So I don't know whether that's fast or slow, but probably relatively fast tells me the age of my video. It's nine days since it was posted. Now, six out of 20 creators suggested that's a really interesting ratio. And that's something else that you'll want to increase because what it is, is how many of the videos in this list here, not the playlist, but the list that appears down the side of the browser are my videos. So what I want to do is when somebody comes and looks at my videos to make sure that the next videos that they're going to look at it's a high chance that that will be one of my videos. So I want quite a large number of my videos to be appearing here. So this one's mine, this one's mine. I could go through and count them. I'm not saying anything in the vidIQ score that I couldn't ascertain myself. But you know, it's a whole lot easier just to quickly look and say, OK, well, I've got six out of 20. That's a pretty good score, although I would like that to be higher. Obviously, I don't want to be advertising other people's videos when they come to watch mine. I have a 25.3% true engagement rate here. I have a 25.3% true engagement rate here. And I have details as to whether I'm in a multi-channel network. Now, it says that I've got a multi-channel network here, but I'm not. So it's not actually giving me usable data here for me because I would know what channel network I was in. But what's interesting is that you can see if other people are in just a minute. So there's a lot of data in just this panel here. But there's also some data here in terms of retention metrics, the devices people are viewing this on, the countries where people are viewing you, and also tags. Now, I know that those are my tags because I put them there. But what's going to be interesting in a minute is that this is going to show me other people's tags. There's also one on traffic sources that helps you identify where your traffic is coming from and if you're embedded. Now, this is early days for this video. It's only nine days old. So I'm not seeing a lot of data in that area. But for older videos, yes, if somebody else has got an embedded or it's I'm getting traffic from another website, I'm going to see that data in here. Now, there's also some historical data here. So I can click and say historical data for this particular video. Well, it's not showing right now. It was a, yeah, here it is. So here are my views, social engagement broken up between Google Plus, YouTube, Facebook, and so on. Views per hour, true engagement, overview of social engagement. And I can go ahead and export any of this data to CSV files. So you can see I've got quite a bit of information there in historical. Tweets, I can see the tweets that refer to this particular video. And I can also get some trending data from YouTube. But really, basically, stats is where I'm at. That's what I'm interested in improving. Firstly, determining what is happening with this video and then saying how I can improve it. So that's how I track my own channel and my own videos using vidIQ. And you can do that. But what's really interesting is to poke around other people's channels. So one thing that I'll do is go and have a look at my competitors or people whom I would aspire to be. So let's go over here because I've got somebody else's website or YouTube site open. This um, gentleman, Sergey Romelli, is somebody whom I would aspire to being. I'd very much like to have 200 odd thousand subscribers to my YouTube channel. So what I can do with vidIQ is because it's installed as a Chrome extension, anytime I go to a YouTube video, even if it's not my video, I'm going to be able to see what's happening. So I can see into his channel. And that gives me access to a couple of really interesting things. One of them is his tags. Now, he's not really very good at tagging on YouTube. He's wasting the opportunity to 
actually get viewers to his YouTube channel by using good tags. Now, I know that my tagging is much, much better than him, but it's really helpful for me to come to somebody like him and have a look at his channel and say, okay, well, what's he doing that I would like to learn from or what am I doing that's better than what he's doing? So one of the things I'm doing is a lot better tagging, but if he were better at tagging, then I could maybe learn from his tags. I can see his vidIQ score for this particular video. I can see that it's embedded on one site and this is where it's embedded. I can see his channel subscribers, his views per hour, the total views for this video. I can see how old this video is and it's not very old at all. In fact, his channel is really doing great guns because if he's got 10,000 viewers in two days, he's doing very, very well from his subscription base. He's only got nine description link counts. So if I open up his description, there are only nine links in here. He's got quite a bit, but not as much as we're running on my channel. He talks a little bit faster than me. He's got a 214 word description count. You can see that he has eight of 19 creator suggested videos. So of 19 videos listed here, eight of those are his. So that's quite a good number. That means that people who come to view this particular video, eight out of 19 of the videos that they're seeing along the side are actually his. So a big encouragement for them to go ahead and watch his other videos. Here we can see the network that he's in. This is a multi-channel network and he's with full screen. So that would be interesting to me over time to have a look and see which multi-channel network people like me who are producing the same sort of content as I'm producing are using because that may be a network that I would be interested in joining. And if you've got a YouTube channel with a good subscription base, you'll already know that you all have been approached a number of times by multi-channel networks and at the point at which you go and join one of those multi-channel networks, this is going to help you identify which ones might be of use to you to at least look to joining. So a lot of information here from vidIQ, not only the information that you can garner for your own videos, but also stuff that's more difficult for you to find out about other people's videos. For example, you just can't find other people's tags unless you poke around in the source code for this particular page. Here we're seeing the tags up front and visible so we can learn from what other people are doing. Now the folks at vidIQ are really good in terms of producing this tool, but really not so good in terms of telling you how to use it. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing as I'm learning more about vidIQ is producing videos for you that will help you understand how you can use the tool and in particular that $10 a month version of it because I think it's got a lot of things that I haven't explored yet, but which I will be over the next few months. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials, in this case on Illustrator, Photoshop, Lightroom and a whole lot more.